It's time to step into the Coming Out Lounge, a cool, safe space to be true to your sexual self. With your host, Rick Clemens. Rick has helped hundreds of people come out of the closet, and now each week he's bringing you cool insights for loving and accepting yourself, boosting your self-confidence, and living a guilt-free, purpose-filled life on the other side of the closet doors. Cuddle up with yourself and get ready for heartwarming coming out stories, ideas for living authentically, and tips for being fully self-expressed. Now here's your host, Coming Out Coach Rick. Hey, 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 closet dwellers and closet busters. It's time once again for the Coming Out Lounge. And today we're going to go into some music sort of stuff. We're going to talk about love is love and how love is what carries you forward and how love can also help you really truly understand that you are no less equal than any other person in the world. And the reason I'm bringing all that up is I've got a really talented guest on the show today. His name is Raf Solo. He is releasing a new song called Love Lives. And he's very much just gone into himself and brought this song forward. He's showing part of his own journey to really start to accept himself. And this is really part of a tribute that he's put together. I'm going to let him explain a little bit of that. But I love this because this is the summer of love. We're celebrating the 25th year of that. And I just want to say, you know what, if nothing else in your journey, as you come out of the closet, no matter whether you're coming out as gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, you're leaving a job you really freaking can't stand, you're saying it's time for a relationship to end, just realize that love continues to live as long as you let it live in your heart. And so with that, I'm going to bring my guest, Raf Solo, onto the Coming Out Lounge and say, welcome, Raf, from the UK. So glad to have you here with us today. Thank you so much, Rick. Very nice to be on your show. I'm honored, actually, to be part of this segment, uh, especially with its deep sentimental meaning and undertone and agenda. If you like, uh, I like the coming out. For me, coming out is about coming out as a loving person, yeah. regardless of what you are. And that's what it kind of all boils down to. It is the summer of love, and it is the 25th anniversary, I guess, yeah. like you just mentioned. So I think the timeliness of releasing that song has been great, somewhat uh, predestined, if you like, with all the little intricacies, the synchronicities of it. For me, what inspired me to write the song is like my personal journey as a human being. Just sort of like dealing with growing up being gay and sort of like trying sort of to accept it. Part of me wasn't totally accepting because of society, my upbringing, what have you. It's been a journey, and I sort of like uh, come to a point where I feel like uh, I'm in a place where I can share a word of love with my fellow brothers and sisters mm-hmm. and say that, you know, just because you love a person, whether you're gay or straight or black or white or whatever, mm-hmm. doesn't make you any less equal or greater uh, for that matter. It just makes you uh, a loving person. There's no harm in coming out as a loving person in this world. It's what life is about. So let's kind of go back to, I want, I want to go back to something you said right when you started talking, because yeah. you know, it is about really, truly just learning to love and love yourself. And I think for yeah. so many of us, as we come out of the closet, that's one of the toughest things is the first place you got to start is, okay, I got to learn to love myself because if I don't love myself, it's going to be really easy for other people to get in there and make me feel as if I'm not good enough and all that sort of stuff. Do you find that kind of be true for yourself too, Raph? Of course, of course. My sort of like belief is like, well, if you can't love yourself, maybe love somebody who love them truly for who they are. And that is sort of uh, have a positive rewarding effect. And it teaches you how to love yourself in a way. Yeah. So love is sort of like love grows. Love mm-hmm. lives. It kind of like it bounces back in you. Yeah. So that's what it's about. Also about coming out. I think it's a, it's a gift you owe it to yourself. Of course, everybody is different. Everybody's situation the country they live in, the upbringing sort of mm-hmm. kind of like dictates whether it's easy for them and when the time is right. So I'm not in a position to determine that for them. They sort of know when they're ready to do that. It's also more, I think we owe it to ourselves to give ourselves the gift of living our truth yeah. without living a lie. Yeah. And I don't think love is a lie. So whichever way you want to look at mm. it. Yeah, that's a really powerful statement that you said that you don't believe that love is a lie. I've done close to 200 episodes on the podcast, and I don't think anybody has ever said that. And that's such a beautiful testament to when you really love, there's nothing false about it. You know, I find 
so many of my clients when I'm working with them or when I'm speaking on stages and somebody approaches me from the, well, you know, this love thing is really, really hard to love myself. I'm like, not if it's real, not if it's real. Love doesn't have to be hard if it's real. If it's surface and you're not going deep, then yeah, it's really difficult because there's nothing there. There's no substance. There's nothing that says this is real. So pay attention to me. And I think so many people find themselves in those false loving places. And then they wonder why they're having such a struggle. So, and I know for you, part of that struggle started from you struggling with your own feelings of homosexuality and you even underwent some reparative therapy, correct? Correct. Correct. You know, but before I go into that, I kind of like yeah, want to go yeah. back to something sure. you were talking about, uh, which was the struggle. I think the struggle in itself is a promise because the fact that you're trying to love is already a big step you're taking as a human being. So whether you end, uh, you end up in a place where you feel you're struggling to love, whether it's yourself or somebody else or whoever, at least you're trying to love. So that is already a big step forward and that's already you loving yourself sort of indirectly without you knowing because you're being true to who you are. Me, who you are, being sort of the essence of love, I believe everybody is. And with returns to reparative therapy that, you know, in a nutshell, I, you know, it was a part of myself that I didn't want to accept maybe at some point. Right. And I tried to change it because I was in situations where I found it a struggle to love certain people. And I thought, well, maybe I deserve this struggle. Uh, nobody deserves the struggle. We should be patted on the shoulder and on the back, if you like, for trying and choosing to love in the first place. So uh, if it's a struggle, then you should be patted on the back twice because you're yeah. trying twice as hard as the next person. So it's all good. It's all win-win. And part of self-love is, you know, learning to embrace who you are. Learning to understand who you are is very important. Learning to accept that you're not perfect. You don't have to be like anybody else, that everybody is individual and unique. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be get a bit scientific about it, everybody has their own unique fingerprints and their own unique set of teeth. And that is just like a biological fact that each and every one of us is unique. Right. So no one's going to be like a carbon copy of anybody else. Mm -hmm. And nobody's going to be, yeah. nobody's oh. going to love the same as anybody else. I think this is that thing. We're all looking for the perfect blueprint of how to do things. And the thing is, is you're going to come out the way you're going to come out. You're going to be who you are the way you're going to be. And you're going to love mm -hmm. the way you love. And too often, I think we get caught up in these ways that we believe we're supposed to do love and the way we're supposed to do relationships. And yes, it's great to learn from other people. But what I find so fascinating is when we think, okay, we got to do this the way everybody else does. And in reality, you can only do it the way you do it because you are your own unique human being. It's that simple. Exactly. I read a book a few years back called Friendship with God. And it's funny when you say God and gay in the same sentence, it somehow seems like a contradiction. Uh -huh. But I think I'm one of those people. It's true. And I think I'm one of those people who wants to stand up and say that, if, yes, I'm gay, but I also kind of like free to believe in God without feeling guilty. Mm -hmm. And that's nothing to be ashamed of. It's something I'm proud of. And it's uh, also something uh, I think as we move into sort of uh, the future, if you like, um, I don't think it's something that's prehistoric to have faith. No. I think it's forward thinking. And that's kind of like what I sort of like wanted to bring back in that book called Friendship with God. It talks about, you know, kind of like learning how to love yourself and accept mm -hmm. yourself. Yep. And it's by me Donald Walsh. And I really liked it. It taught me a lot. It's a book I just wanted to recommend. So yeah. what is one of the things you've done to really learn to love yourself? I think that would be really interesting for the listeners to hear. To be a little lighthearted about it, I think I've uh, gotten myself into a lot of shitty situations and I've had to yeah. get myself out of a lot of shitty holes. Yeah. And so I've just basically had to, you know, just find a better way. And I refused mm -hmm. to become a jaded or cynical, bitter person as a result of my experiences. And I always wanted to act in a loving way. And I always wanted to have faith and I was proud to have that. And I also wanted to be true and authentic in how I love. And so I had to find a way to make it all work. And I found myself by doing that. And, and I, th I think the humor that you bring to that, I love that response because you realize <laughs> I get myself in some really shitty spaces, but that means I also get myself out of those really shitty spaces. And that's how you learn to love yourself. It's like, I can do this. I can, you know, I can get myself in and out of those predicaments. I can get myself through these up and down times and, 
but sometimes I think we forget, you know, in fact, one of the things that I was being interviewed last week on a, a different podcast and they asked me what, what I felt that my secret to success was. And I kind of laughed. I said, there is no secret to success. But I said, one thing that I know is I appreciate everything I do. I appreciate, I take pride. And we were, you know, I was doing a conversation around pride as a coach and, and what I take pride in, mm. in my business. And I said, how many of you, and you know, it was all coaches that were listening to me, but I've done this similar talk with other people. It's like, how many of us wake up in the morning or go to bed at night and say, I'm really proud of what I did today. Very few of us do that on a daily basis. I'm really proud that I was able to interview Raph today on my podcast and we had a great conversation. Really, I'm really proud that I have the capacity to you know, know the technologies in and out of being a podcaster. I'm really you know, grateful right before we got on the phone, I was running around doing stuff because I'm getting ready to travel and I'm doing some stuff around the house. And you know, I'm really proud that I'm able to do some of the home repairs. But how many of us sit down at the end of the day and say, wow, I'm really proud of those things. And I think this is where you start the self-love space is being proud of what you are capable of and who you are. And I know that shines through in what your message is as well, Raph. It's a journey. Every day is a journey. Oh, absolutely. Uh, every day is a, a struggle and a strive, but every day is a victorious day as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, you know, life is, um, you sort of live one whole lifetime. I feel sometimes every day you live in a way, in a, in a capsule, in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. For me, you know, taking pride in what you do is very important. It's also uh, about self-awareness. Mm -hmm. I think having a conscious, reflecting on what you're doing, having that golden rule, how would it feel if I did that to that person, if it was done to me? Mm -hmm. Sort of like, think, you know, little things like that, kind of like a, add to your sense of well-being and your sense of being comfortable with who you are and being proud of who you are because you you start to feel better about yourself. And it's just being sort of like brave enough to sort of like uh, embrace the things that are not so perfect about you. Mm -hmm. And just maybe sometimes think, well, if this was not the person, or if I was another person and I had to treat him kindly, how would I treat him? Mm -hmm. And sometimes talking about yourself like you're the third party uh, can sometimes uh, teach you how to be nice to yourself and mm -hmm. let you love yourself and be kinder to yourself. And I think a lot of us beat ourselves up too much nowadays because we are always trying to like adhere to a stir your typical uh, ideal, if you like. And like you said, there is no ideal. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can have maps and guidelines uh we all sort of have an, uh, an innate right. universal code of what is love and that's great but like you said we're also very different so it's kind of like learning to understand that mm -hmm. and understanding it leads to you accepting and embracing it so i'm curious i'm sure people who've been interviewing or talking to you about the song and everything but i'm curious what your definition of love is just you know i know that's kind of like okay here's the big question but um what would you say love is to you man I don't know if you can define love. I mean, there's love has so many shapes and sizes. I mean, it's about mm -hmm. giving. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, cutting someone slack if they fuck up. It's about uh, being kind to people. It's about not being derogatory. It's about respecting people like you would like to be respected. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about forgiving. It's about, uh, you know, love seeks no damage. That's also mm -hmm. another line that I read in that book. Mm -hmm. I think that's a nice way to sometimes think, you know, love shouldn't make you feel hurt. It shouldn't make you feel rejected. It shouldn't make you feel shame. It shouldn't make you feel fear. Love is not fear. Maybe mm -hmm. that's a good one as well. That's a good one too. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I always, you know, when I've been asked that question, because I do so much work in the LGBTQ community, but then I also do work in, in corporate culture and changing corporate cultures. And I get asked, well, what's the best way to really have an impact in corporate culture? And I said, this is going to sound so contrary to what we've been told, but the best place to start to change corporate culture is with love. And love everything and everybody that's in the culture for who they are and what they are. And to also realize that, as you said, Raph, love is many, many shades of different things. There is no, I don't think there's any one definition for love. I see it as a plethora of colors 
that you see, you know, the way I love a burger or the way I love my strong coffee in the morning is completely different kind of love than the love I feel for my children or the love that I feel for, you know, my husband or my parents or the love that I feel for the work that I get to do or the love that I feel when I, I get on a podcast like this, getting to talk to people that I never met before, but we share some common stuff and realizing wow, there's just so many layers of love. And I think that's the key is realizing love takes on many, many different facets and forms, not just in who we love, but how we love. And I'm so glad you shared that because that's a a big piece of the message here. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting you describing love. It's kind of like you're describing uh, people as well. Mm -hmm. If you sit back and listen to yourself, (laughs) which Mm -hmm. is a nice thing to say because I think essentially maybe love is us. Mm Mm-hmm. And we love is who we are. Uh, you know, one of the you know, one of the exercises I do with clients is I have them when they're trying to figure something out about you know a challenge or something, or they're having a challenge with another person. It's usually it's almost always what they're having something with another person, and I say, so let's do this. Let's let's talk about what you really would like for that person. And it's so interesting because they start to list off things, and and I just sit there very quiet. I don't really say anything. I just let them go. And every once in a while say anything else and anything else. And then once they're done, I, I kind of recap. So let's just say that if I was doing with this with you, it sounds like Raph, what you want for your husband or your partner is, you know, you want him to be happy. You want him to be successful. You want him to feel loved by you and respected by you. He wants you to treat him with integrity. Okay. So we've covered four or five things. So I say all those things and then I turn it around and I say, but here's the irony. Everything you just said you want for your husband is exactly what you want for yourself. And do you love yourself enough to give that to yourself? And it's such a huge moment because it typically gets really quiet on the other end of the phone or on the other side of the video camera. Just just like like I did right now. Yeah, because suddenly we're not that different. Yes, we may be, you know, in this horrible place. And, you know, one of the things that I do with it is when I have a husband or a wife who's coming out of the closet and, you know, their spouse is like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is happening to me. And, of course, it usually turns into some really scary, ugly spaces at time. And then that's when I usually pull the exercise out is like, okay, yeah, I realize your wife is angry at you or your husband's angry at you for coming out of the closet. And you want to do the best thing you can. You want to try to be nice, but now it's getting really tough because they're getting really evil and can be a bitch or an asshole to you right now, which kind of you deserve. We get it. We've already worked through all that. But when I pull that tool out and I get them talking about what do they really want for that spouse who's in pain, 99% of the time, it's the same stuff they want for themselves, but they just haven't given themselves the permission to open up that love door and go, yes, this is what I need for myself as much as I want it for my spouse, soon to be ex-spouse, whatever it may be. But um, it's really, really powerful. So I'm curious about the song. So we've been talking about love and everything. For the listeners, what was the driver? I know there's a little story behind this and I didn't want to, I didn't want to reveal it. I wanted you to tell that, you know, there's a story of what you wrote the song for and then suddenly something shifted. So why don't you share with the listeners a little bit about that? The song was kind of written like a, it was written for my musical journal, if you like. Sometimes I just write little verses and choruses for, to keep a record of uh, things that I've experienced and felt. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's kind of like a little autobiography of the journey that I've been through to find love. Yep. And in the song lyric is the story of the journey that I've been. And the chorus sort of talks like love lives and I see you walking down the street. And it's true, it's when you sort of like walk down the street sometimes and you see two people holding hands and you're like, wow, you know, I want that. I want the freedom that these people have given themselves to live a life in love. And that kind of like opens up and you sort of like look into yourself and you sort of find that person who is uh, able to give themselves permission to be unafraid to love. And that's what the song was about. Uh, it wasn't intended as a single. It wasn't even intended to, to be... Uh, a recording, but I just sort of like recorded it on my birthday uh, as a gift to myself. And, uh, you know, with the current political climate, yeah. I thought, you know, Ralph, uh, this is a very good time for you to release this kind of a song. So I took time out from recording my album and I just stuck out a single. Mm. And, you know, it's been well received and I'm very happy, but more than anything, I just sort of wanted to 
like your show, I, you know, it's great for me to take part in these things because uh, it reminds me of uh, why and the reason that I do what I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not to get rich or be famous because I'm happy the way I am. Uh, it's more to uh, share my art and my experiences with people uh, in the hope that I can deliver a message of love. And that's what inspires me as a singer, songwriter, artist. Mm-hmm. And I think the thing that's missing right now, given, as you said, the the political climates in a lot of places, particularly in the UK and the US right now, for dang sure. um, Very much so, yes. Is we are forgetting, and I know it's tough. I mean, I'm not not even going to pretend to put myself up on a pedestal here because I was just bitching to a friend this morning about things that are going on in our own country. It's really tough sometimes to bring the love forward when you're like, seriously, what what is happening here? But then... If you stop in the midst of that and say, okay, how can I be loving in this moment? How can I really turn my loving juices up 10 notches or five notches or whatever it is? Mm. It actually begins to bring some calmness. Doesn't mean I still don't disagree with, you know, our lovely president here in the damn USA. I can't stand the son of a bitch. But anyway, okay, that's the first time I ever said that on the air. But, um, you know, it's one of those things where you go, okay, if I could not call him a son of a bitch, what could I do? How could I love and realize he's a human being? Well, right there, there's where you start. Okay, he's a human being. He's going to screw up. He's going to fuck up, just like I fuck up. He doesn't know any better in his own way. He doesn't know how to do it any better. That's what he's doing. He's done this for so long. And it was one of those moments where I started realizing years ago, I finally said those same words about my own father. He's doing the best he can. If I can just accept he's doing the best he can and I cannot try to change that because I've tried that route and that doesn't work. Suddenly it's much easier. Doesn't mean I still don't have similar feelings, but it's so much easier to release stuff and go, okay, now let's move forward. Then I move into a space where maybe I can actually have a conversation. Maybe I can do something differently. But I think it starts with opening our heart, saying, okay, what's a different loving way to show up right now in this moment? I think, for me, maybe, I think there's a slightly, a very slight difference between them. He doesn't know any better, and he's doing his best. He's doing his best means to me that a person is trying. He doesn't know any better means that he doesn't know any better. Yeah. So uh, I think there's a very slight difference between mm-hmm. the two. It's, uh, yeah, I agree. But it's not our job. It's not a, our job to judge mm-hmm. which category which person fits into. Our job uh, as loving people is we can what we'd love to. And I think for a person who doesn't know any better, the best way sometimes is to hold up a mirror or mm-hmm. let them sort of like feel what it feels like for the other person. Mm-hmm. Like if he was in the situation that he was in the situation and he X, Y, Z was being inflicted upon him, how would he like it? And that kind of like for the person who doesn't know any better can sort of like, it can be a bit of an awakening and they can be like, well, actually, I don't really like that so much. So maybe I would think twice about doing that mm-hmm. next time before I do it. And then he becomes a person who is doing his best. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think and there's, there's a, a very... Yeah, there's definitely. Yeah, that's how I look at it. Yeah, I, and I I get that too because there's so many ways to do this, and oftentimes we don't even start to look at the different ways to look at this and bring it up. Whether it's they're doing the best they can, they're trying their hardest. All these there's there's layers, but we so often just go like, okay, they're just an asshole. They're just, and they still may just be an asshole. Yeah, I mean but, that doesn't that doesn't help either. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. And I've yeah. seen it in myself as I've really, really worked hard with this because that's one of my triggers. I can go to everybody's an asshole in like a heartbeat. I can go there really quickly, but I've worked so hard to A, recognize that in myself and B, go, what does that really get me? If everybody's an asshole, then I'm a kind of a narcissistic asshole myself. So now let's go, well, everybody, they may have asshole tendencies, but what's the other good in them? What can I find good in them? And yes, it's hard at times to do that, But again, it's opening that heart of love and going, okay, let's at least try because I know for me, and I don't know if this is, I think this is pretty common for everybody because I work with so many people on a regular basis around this, that even when you say, okay, what is the good I can find? It changes you physiologically. Suddenly when you ask that question, that anger or that asshole that you're, you know, feeling that you're having towards them, when you go, okay, I think he's an asshole, but what's something good I can find about them? 
suddenly you slow down, you think a little bit differently, you start to open the doorway. And to me, that's where the loving heart starts to show up. Of course. And also by choosing to see the good in somebody, you're also choosing to connect with the good in yourself. And Mm -hmm. and that's coming from a good place. Mm -hmm. So I totally sort of like get that, you know. So you sound like a very spiritual person. That last statement really came. I am. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Yeah. So when I say that, what is that? When I say you sound like a spiritual person, what does a spiritual person mean to you? For me, a spiritual person is there somebody who believes in a higher power and somebody who believes we come from something and we're going to go to something and this is not just what life is about. Mm-hmm. For me, uh, being spiritual is about being aware of your actions, karma, if you like. Yep. I believe in that. It's about being you know, a loving person and it's about realizing that everybody's got a message in life and everybody's got a purpose and nobody is less important or more important. It's just everybody's got their own little gig to turn mm-hmm. up to, if you like. Yeah, and just that we're all connected on a mm-hmm. higher level. Yeah. Some people think it's a little too she-la-la-la and that's <laughs> fine with me. I'm, <laughs> I'm confident enough in my own skin to sort of like give myself. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is there's where we kind of bring this full circle of the love is love is when you feel comfortable enough to be yourself in your own skin. And I know through your reparative therapy journey and everything, what you discovered was it was just, it was more work to try to not be that. And you continued to feel like a failure, no matter how hard you tried, because you were trying to change feelings that couldn't be felt. And it was a worthless journey so to speak i mean not worthless because you learned this is i mean I, I learned to accept myself yeah yeah, yeah. And, but it was really interesting i think also i have a great relationship with my mom right now and my dad was not you know was not with us anymore mm-hmm. but i came out with my mom but uh, i think you know obviously my mom was sort of like a, comes from a very conservative sort of like religious background and i think for her accepting that it was okay and turning around i mean obviously she loved me because i was her son and i, I loved her back but her sort of, you know, her sort of like the views were sort of maybe not as open as they are now. Mm-hmm. And I think it, it was very simple. I was like, well, mom, if dad was gay, how would you feel? Mm. Uh, so what would be the point of me trying to go straight? Right. And if I was to marry a guy, I mean, would you like it if dad was gay before? And she was like, no, actually, maybe I would not. Because I would want to feel that um, he was only into me and that his love for me was just you know, soul and true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, why would you want me to do that to another girl then? <laughs> right. If exactly. it, and she was like, yeah, actually, you're right. For the first time, I, I see it from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. And it was that simple. And after that, we didn't need and ever need to have a conversation mm-hmm. about being gay. And I was like, you know, and and the, and that was it. And when you, again, that's a bit like shining a mirror. Mm-hmm. Well, what you just said was such a beautiful way of like bringing the truth to the situation. Would you want me to do this to a girl? You know, it's like the honest to God truth. I've gotten beat up many, many times because of, you know, yeah. doing this show, the books I've written about coming out late in life. And people always say, how could you do that to your wife? And I'm like, I didn't do that. I did what I thought was right at the beginning because I, I loved her. I cared for her and all this sort of stuff. Mm. But then when I realized I can't do this anymore. That's what I did to her. I did the truth of, I can't do this anymore. This isn't right for either one of us. She didn't know it because I hadn't come out yet. But in the end, it was, yes, did I do something? Sure. I lived a life that wasn't true. But at the end, I'm now living a life that is true. So she can go live her life that is true. And for many people, this is the part of it they had the hardest time with. It's like, but you're gay. That's not what you're supposed to be. You're not living your true self. How do you know I'm not my true self? I know I'm my true self. I have no doubt in my mind I am my true self as a gay man. I feel it in my bones to the depths of my soul and to the higher power that I have a relationship with. I know this to be my truth. And I love some of the stuff that I know you feel and say in in some of the information I've gotten on you that this is where it is truly you being able to step into yourself so you can like yourself that helps you have the respect to keep holding on and doing what's right for yourself. Exactly. And if you were to look at that, at your situation as a human being, you're a human being who did not love another human being. For that reason, you wanted to terminate or change the nature of a relationship Mm -hmm. because it was not true to how you felt as a human being. So that is, those, you know, sort of transcends being straight or gay still applies. So yeah. Yeah. 
Absolutely. So just so, a different gallery. So yeah. you're working on a new album. You're trying to get it done this year, but it looks like you won't do it all this year because you're you're kind of changing the kind of the vibe, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of like in the studio recording, sort of between now and the second, the end of the year, mm-hmm. or the second part of this year, and I'm sort of like, I've got a new sound that I'm mm-hmm. working on, experimenting with. So yeah, it's taken a little longer than anticipated, but hopefully, I should have uh, a new album ready for 2018, and no awesome. doubt, this will have a lot of messages and uh, tales and stories and experiences mm-hmm. and things to share that come from the heart. Awesome. As always with me. Well, yeah, I can tell you're just a very heart-centered guy, Raph, and I'm so glad we had the opportunity to connect. And and I'd love to have you back when the album comes out in 2018 to talk about it and talk about the messages behind it and all that stuff. Yeah. I just You've just been a joy. And very much, I, I knew the minute we started talking before we came on the podcast that you're a very spiritual guy, and I, I connect really well with very spiritual people. So um, just wish you all and the it's been- in the world. And likewise, it's been great, Rick, to have you on, you know, to have me on your show. And uh, I love what you're doing. And just keep it up. We need people like you. Well, awesome. Thank so, you. Be, so before we wrap it up, one of the questions I always ask um, guests is mm-hmm. if you could leave a piece of advice for anybody who's struggling, you know, they're trying to find themselves, be themselves, step out or whatever that closet is. What would be the last bit of advice you'd love to leave the listeners with today? Be kind to yourself simple <laughs> that is very simple and i love it when stuff is that simple because from kindness is where love grows from kindness is where yeah. respect grows to me from kindness is where confidence grows i get asked all the time well i need more confidence in myself i said then you need to start being kind to yourself you can't look in the mirror and go oh you're a fat pig and then expect to be confident it doesn't work you know oh look at that nipple it's it's deformed well no you can't do that or oh look at my dick it's it's too small None of this, you know, works. You can't go walk into your office at work and go, oh, another day of me just failing because I don't really get this. That's not how you build confidence. That's not how you build self-love. None of this. So um, I just love that it's that simple that you left that with the listeners because it is as simple as be kind to yourself. Yeah. All right, Raph. Well, thank you again, my friend, my new friend. Thank you so much. Go enjoy the rest of your evening across the pond. And again, appreciate you so much for coming and being part of the Coming Out Lounge. So there you have it, Closet Dwellers and Closet Busters. Another episode of the Coming Out Lounge has just wrapped up. Thank you so much for listening. I so appreciate each and every one of you who tune in and and take in these interviews and my riffs and rants and everything to help hopefully improve your life in some way, shape, or form as you're on your journey coming out to be your most truthful self. And, you know, one of the things that's really important to me is that this podcast gets shared over and over and over again to those who this may be their only way of finding some help and support to get them through these tougher parts of life. So if you could just do a rating and review, that would be super cool. Do it at iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, wherever you're listening to us. Um, Just give us a little rating review. And if you feel like sharing, just especially on iTunes, just hit that little share button and boom, you can share it with whoever you want in a message, an email, however you want to do it. Another thing you might want to do is also go to the Coming Out Lounge website. You'll see a little icon there that says get Rick's book and you'll see my smiling beautiful face and give yourself the gift of reading the book it's kind of humorous what's more than kind of humorous it's kind of funny what's more than kind of funny it is funny but it's also really real about your journey coming in and out of the closet and I would love to share that with you so go ahead take advantage of that and grab a copy of my book and until next time we hope you just keep stepping out stepping up and stepping into living your powerful truth take care everyone and have a good 